who was, do, do you have a favorite witness? My favorite witness personally, when I think back on it all was Sammy from McDaniel street. Uh, but is yeah. there, is there a, a, a witness that you found most entertaining? I mean, it, it, it's hard for you to find witnesses entertaining when this is a serious job for you, but is there someone that stands out to you as your favorite? I think I have one. Okay. Go ahead, Shaq. Um, I can't, Honestly, I can't remember his name because it's, it was so early in the trial, but I think it was, and Max, you could kind of like jump in, the guy who was incarcerated and then begged Judge Glanville to be sent back to prison and kept begging. Yeah, just, that was D'Angelo White. Yeah, yeah D'Angelo White, I think. Oh, that, oh God, so. yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, we, we had a little lesser experience uh, watching it online because he wasn't on camera, but it almost wow. kind of added to it because you could hear his chains shaking and stuff as he's like, I mean, it was that, that was that was pretty remarkable. Uh, is that, would you say that one, Max? Or No, I, I, you know, I, and people are going to think I'm crazy, but I, I really want, things to work out for Mr. Copeland. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's happened in the past. I know that, you know, I've said in in my closing that this is a sick, sick game. Mm -hmm. And he's someone that was put in a very bad situation. Um, And he, and he came to court and Mm -hmm. he tried to make the best of the bad situation he was in. And, but, you know, I, th- I think I mentioned this earlier, but, you know, he, he clearly loves his daughters, um, which is always, I'm always going to respect that. So I just want, I just want him to succeed. Um, as odd as that sounds, because. You, you accused know, him of murder. Well, and he, you know, and quite honestly, the, the lies he told in that interrogation room probably caused about four months of work for me. Um, but and arguably I, it led to this case. I mean, there were a lot of statements, but so much of this case just seemed built on those statements. But I've never been in that situation either. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, give him the grace. And I really, because I, I think what he did say in front of the jury, really, he said it in front of America, which yeah. is that way of building this case with just taking people that are at their lowest and just, you know, taking what they say is gospel when, when they're clearly trying to save themselves, that's just not the way to get to the truth. And, um, and so I appreciated that and I really hope the best for him. Yeah. And, you know, we yeah. I have it on good authority, despite the fact that we went like this in court, that, that we're good and, and, you know, I wish him the best. Yeah. Yeah. I see, I see somebody say, and I've, I've heard this saying before yesterday's price is not today's price, but of course, being a criminal defense attorney and wanting to represent the clients that you want to represent, unless you just want to represent a bunch of, you know, people accused of white collar crime in federal court, you're not looking to jack up your rates a bunch because of this. Right. I mean, you, you, you have to there's deal with the clients that you have. Right. There's easier ways to make money than criminal yeah. defense. I'll put it like yeah. that. So I don't I don't think too many of us are in it, you know, just for the money. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I just I'm so appreciative of just the recognition that people have given me, especially, you know, and, and the sad thing is, and I'm I'm going to stick up. I I was a public defender for many years. And I went, I dealt with my cases as a public defender exactly the same way I dealt with this case. And and Shaq will tell you that because Shaq worked with me uh, at the public defender's office. Sometimes, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I'm not saying all public defenders are great or all are bad. It's It's a mixed bag, just like private attorneys. But sometimes, unfortunately, you know, I've had big wins as a public defender where no one noticed. Um, no one had any idea that of what happened in court. And and also sometimes when you when you don't charge and you're free, it's just assumed you're lesser. So 
just having this recognition um just you know it just means the world to me that that we were able to get a favorable outcome and the out outpouring of support is just unbelievable so i'm very appreciative of that yeah I'm, I'm going to bring up a question here that reminds me of uh, a comment Judge Whitaker made when she seemed to be referring to some of the online stuff when she talked about people just getting to the, the details of the trial. But for sure, they, I mean, all the trial watchers know all the details of the case. And somebody is, uh, mm-hmm. Michelle is saying she calls BS on a gun ever even being thrown out of the car. And it says it would have been obvious from the helicopter footage. And of course, this is the gun that Shannon was the only conviction that he had. And can you talk about um, how, how you would address that and you had so much to deal with with the overall murders that what was the defense on this i didn't i didn't address that yeah i mean you, uh, like you we, said you kind of just acknowledged acknowledged we, it or well yeah it. i didn't even acknowledge it i, I didn't yeah. in my closing argument I, I didn't cross examine any witnesses i mean here's the thing i knew that there was not a mandatory minimum on the gun charge uh even with the recidivists i knew that judge whitaker had the ability to sentence shannon to time served on that And Shannon was facing two separate murders with life without parole, mandatory on each one. Rico, 20 years, gang charges, another 20 years per gang charge, other gun charges. It was two life sentences plus probably 300 years. Yeah. I'm not going to blow my credibility on this whole case in front of the jury arguing that a gun that's registered to miss alexander that was found by the police allegedly Mm -hmm. at metal arc lane i'm not going to blow my credibility for everything else i said to argue that point so i didn't i didn't you know i didn't get up there and say okay find my client guilty of count 64 but i didn't mention it at all and that was that was very intentional because that was not a fight I wanted to wage. And that was a fight that we could afford to lose. It, it, kind of an example of, well, you need to focus on the details, like stuff like this. You also need to focus on the bigger picture. And if you're worried right. the details are going to cloud the bigger picture, it's kind of best to to leave it out. Um, somebody wants to know where the watch is. I know this was Doug's thing, but... Um, I, I didn't... I lost. didn't... Yeah. I, I, I had so much going on. I didn't have time to, to worry about the watch. Um, I know that was Doug saying, I, I don't know. And I, you know, I don't like making accusations. My understanding is the watch is missing, but Mm -hmm. beyond that, I don't know anything about the watch. And quite honestly, the, probably the one part of the discovery that we don't know about at all is the whole watch saga, because really the search of Mr. Williams house had absolutely nothing to do with shit. So I just wanted to make it clear that you know, when that came up, Shannon wasn't there and none of the guns seized had anything to do with anything Shannon's charged with. And that's it. And so I wasn't, I was worried about the watch. Yeah. Um, Somebody, and somebody just wants to say you're all amazing. Thanks for, thanks for fighting. And and, and let me, let me, can I say one other thing that kind of goes along with the watch? Cause I, I feel compelled to say a lot of people, I'm, there are certain prosecutors that were on this case that are good people. Um, and, you know, I know that people are caught up because people, people direct message me. People are caught up with the drinks, cell phone dump, you know, and, and think that, you know, cause it was on Mr. Abadi's computer. Let me, let me clear this up. Yeah. I messed up when I was talking to, when I was cross-examining Detective Hogan, I said they, I misspoke and said they never collected the phone. They did. Detective Hogan is such a nice guy that he agreed with me. So it wasn't something that was hidden. It wasn't something hidden that everyone caught on a body's computer. They, they handed that over. So that was something that I created just through a mistake in Detective Hogan, because he's such an agreeable guy. He, agreed with me but that was incorrect so yeah and then with the with the watch thing and 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 certain there was rumors about certain da's none of that has any legs at all so you know there were good people on 
on the other side. Um, I got to know Mr. Atkins is one of the kindest prosecutors you will ever meet. Yeah. Um, and, and he's good. Uh, Miss yes, Hilton. I, yeah, I've known way crystallizing things. Right. And I've known Miss Hilton for some time. And I, I, I've, I had a strong disagreement with Miss Hilton once about a case, like a real visceral disagreement with her. And um, so it's not like I've never disagreed with her, but I'm not good. Miss Hilton's a good person and she's, she's a good prosecutor. So I hate, I hate that some of the negativity that's been thrown their way. I think this was a bad case to bring. I didn't agree with it. I'm so happy that we won. I think justice was served, but I just don't want to disparage groups of people. Um, because yeah. a lot of the things that we're assuming, it's not 100% accurate. Well, and it, it reminds me is, as a reporter, you learn this, of course, is no matter how obvious something is, it's just a basic fairness to call the people involved to get comment. But then just because something seems obvious and the proof is there in the documents, there could be another explanation, like you said, for this cell phone dump. It's like, well, the reason the cell phone dump is there is because there actually was a cell phone dump and there was basically just mis, uh, miscommunication. Right. Or, I mean, Al, Al Hogan perjured himself to... It, to well, say no, he he, 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 he he didn't he didn't, he didn't, I mean, he didn't yeah. perjure himself. He he basically I I was incorrect, and he's just and such he's a good kind of guy. A he he assumed that I was correct, oh, okay. um, and so he he went along mm -hmm. with it. And and um, you know, then I talked to Simone afterwards, and she was like, you know, you weren't right about that. And I was like, oh dang, I wasn't okay. And yeah. so I I I unintentionally created that whole situation. Well, Gosh, man, they're they're exhausting on there. They're a busy bunch, and they've got a lot to talk about. So I wonder what the what the posts are going to be like that about now. But but yeah, yeah, that like you said, it was one challenge to kind of deal with all that, having all those people adding you all the time and wanting to wanting to uh, give you advice. But um, but uh, Mr. Bot, I don't know, if, I can't remember if we addressed this, but did you have a favorite uh, witness or most memorable witness? Well, I mean, certainly I'd have to agree with him that Woody was the most entertaining. But other than that, I didn't have a favorite witness because they were all against us. Well, that's yeah. not true. Well, I know, but I mean, the fact witness is a fact witness, and I appreciate them saying a fact, but that doesn't make them a favorite. But no, they were, you have to put them all in the same category, really. And if they're a favorite, that's because they're telling the truth. But if they're not telling the truth, it's hard for them to be a favorite. One of, one of my other favorites was when I um I asked, I call her Polka. That's her nickname. That's yeah. Taisha Alexander. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, I kind of soft pedaled it. I was like, and then, you know, these people tried to rob you on March 9th, 2022, and then you shot at them. And she said, no. I shot them. <laughs> and I, was like, shot them. <laughs> I was like, okay. And, you know, but she was, I mean, I've seen a video of that incident. She was a hundred percent. It was hundred percent self-defense. It was ridiculous what, what led to it. But she, she was quick to correct me. No, I didn't shoot at him. I shot him. <laughs> so she was also yeah. the first one to say that, yes, I know Shannon. He's the best thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm the best thing he ever had. I'm the, I'm the one of the prettiest girls he's ever had. Now, I appreciate yeah. somebody who had to watch this online. Appreciate the fact that the microphone or the camera hadn't actually cut in when she said that. And Simone repeated it for the record yeah. for, for, yeah. for us at home. She said, oh, talk that talk girl. You said you, you said you're the prettiest girl he ever had. It's like, oh, thank you, Simone. We needed that. <laughs> um like moments like that but like like mr bot said it's hard to it's hard to like these people or be too entertained by them when they're overall not good witnesses for you or supposedly on paper they're not supposed to be good witnesses for you but 